welcome to episode 10 of the Hub City Fibers podcast. This is a podcast about knitting and pretty much anything that has to do with my indie dye company, which is Hub City Fibers. I started off in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which is also referred to as Hub City, as well as the crown of my logo, also playing homage to the place where I started dyeing yarn, which is Old Queens which is why I have a crown as my logo. Um, this is a big episode because I did go on my honeymoon to Japan and I will be talking a little bit about that and showing you guys a little bit of my experience in Japan as well as me getting married and giveaways and all the fun stuff. So definitely stay tuned and watch till the end. Um, I actually have show notes, so let me get those right away. I am really excited because I have a lot to show you guys and yeah so let's start off with what I've been making and you know since it's been a crazy month October was a crazy month and I didn't knit too much. Uh, actually let's just go into what I've been making. Living in my you so and so project bag which as you guys know is one of my favorite bags. It has these little sheep motifs, but I love it. It's amazing. Pretty much what's living in here is my Tecumseh. I haven't really been knitting too much on it. I have done a couple modifications on it because I don't like the original style or fit of the original design. And honestly, if you're a knitter, you should be take, ca catering your sweaters or your dis or whatever it is that you're making. You should just take the pattern that you're working with and make something that is unique for you and your body because everybody's body is different. We are not all the same cookie size. So I thought that I would make it cropped and I'm going to modify the sleeves to be uh, ribbed. So as you can see here, it's just a one by one rib. I want it to be, it's a very heavy weight sweater. It's using Hub City Fibers uh, Delicious Base, which is 100% superwash merino, merino nylon cashmere. I'm sorry, it's not 100%, what am I saying? It's 80-10-10, uh, 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, and 10% cashmere, which is just such a yummy blend. And yeah, this is what progress looks like so far. This is the this is the sleeve that I'm working on. It's a one by one rib. And so far thus, like I said, I haven't really been working on it, but it's such a yummy, yummy yarn. And it's just starting now to get cold and fall here in New Jersey. So I know that I'm going to get the urge to want to knit this, but it's been just so crazy. I literally came back from Japan like two, three days ago. And so I've just been trying to acclimate myself to everyday life again. So so living in this adorable like recycled cat bag, it says I do as I please is a sock that I've been working on <clears throat> and the sock that I've been working on is pretty much me trying to learn to do the fish kiss the kiss fish kiss heel F fish kiss hip heel or whatever fish kiss fish lips kiss heel and I am using Woolen Vine Yarns. I've had this in my stash for a while since the summertime. I bought this yarn at a trunk show she had at some yarn shop in New Jersey that I forget the name of it. But she had a trunk show in some yarn shop in New Jersey. And I went to go visit her because I love watching her podcast. If you guys don't know her, she is, you probably know her if you're watching this podcast because she's awesome. But um, I'm using her colorway in peach, in fuzz, fuzzy navel, yeah, fuzzy navel, and it's like this peachy colorway, 
And again, I it's just like a re a regular a regular vanilla sock, two by two. My formula for my vanilla sock is just like a two by two rib. And then I wanted to make this a little bit like a shorter sock. And really the reason why I casted this on is because I don't have any socks that I... I wanted to cast on another pair of socks. These are my favorite sock needles. These are the Haya Haya Sharps. And I'm using the 1.5 US or 2.5 millimeter. And these are just the best. I like like a nice little sharp edge, but... Uh, the reason I cast these on is to really practice the, the heel. I usually just do like a, a garter stitch heel or the, the heel flap. Uh, pardon the noise, that's one of my cats. He, he has a deviated septum, so he makes random noises, but his name's Wheezy. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's just something nice to have on the side. And so far, so good on the heel. I always, I had this, this pattern in my, in my, queue for so long but I was so deterred from actually using it just because it was like a 19 page pattern but you know I've been watching so many podcasts now and a lot of knitters use this fish lips kissed heel fish kiss fish kiss hip what a tongue twister the fish lips kissed heel and I said, you know what, let me take a crack at it. If I can knit sweaters, then I could do a simple heel pattern. So, and let me guys, and this is in her footsie base, which is 80-20 super wash blue face Lester. And honestly, there's nothing like a nice blue face Lester yarn. So I'm really happy I'm knitting this. Also, yeah. It's kind of bright. It is one of her summer colorways, but there's nothing like a nice uh, bright sock to wear when you're going to the gym. You know, gym clothes is always very neon-esque now, so it's perfect. And plus, there's nothing like wool socks. So that's living in this bag. I do as I please. Also, I don't know about you guys, but I am definitely in need of a new project bag so I'm definitely gonna start looking or you know keeping my eyes peeled for a cool project bag that's uh, hefty and handmade of course because I like to support makers but that's living in that bag another project that I'm working on which actually was the project I've been working on uh, while I was, you know, on the airplane, because airplane knitting is a thing. Usually I don't knit on vacations, believe it or not, because I just never find the time to, but with a 14 hour flight to Japan and China, then there was plenty of time. So let us look in here. So I have been knitting on a hat. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, I'm at Hub, City, uh, at Hub City Fibers, then you know that I have casted on the Kaboo Cat. And this is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter, and it has bobbles, which I've never done or knitted bobbles before. So I'm really excited to have introduced this technique into my repertoire of knitting stitches because it's really not as difficult as it looks. It's a fun hat and... I'm really enjoying it, and I really just love the style of the hat, really. Um, so let me show you it up close. And before I do that, I am using Hub City Fibers in my Skin Deep colorway in my Delicious base, which again is Merino Nylon, Merino Nylon Cashmere. This skin tone color, which I, I'm a, a huge fan of nudes. I really, really enjoy knitting and wearing the color nude or just nude spectrum colors like browns so this is like a perfect pink skin tone color which i really really like and i'm i, I honestly want to develop a, a nude line just because again like i love nudes and i love all shades of nudes from dark brown all the way to like really pale yellow um i really love just how it, it looks on this on on garments. So I'm knitting that using Hub City Fibers Delicious Base. 
as well as my Chelsea Yarns uh, Luxe Mohair, which is mohair and silk. It's beautiful kid silk cloud and it's perfect for this pattern because this pattern requires you to knit with two strands and yeah and this is in her cell this i this yarn i acquired during chelsea yarns five year in business celebration and this this colorway is called celebration and honestly this color pairs so well with my skin tone with my skin deep colorway I'm so obsessed with how it's turning out. Let me show you guys. So I'm almost done, I'm actually decreasing, but this is it. And I love it so much. This is gonna get so much wear this winter. So when I knit this originally, I actually, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I kind of screwed up the pattern here. I had, I screwed it up. Pretty much. And I also, I took it out and I measured my, my head on it. It was definitely too big. I, I originally was knitting the small uh, adult size. And it was just too big for my head. And I, and I knew that knitting it just because I've seen uh, this finished product in multiple yarn stores. And like I tried it on and it was really big. But I was also hesitant to try the child size. Which is what I actually ended up knitting because I ripped back and the child size I think fits me perfect so I am at the decrease end but yeah isn't this just like such a fabulous color combo and I think it goes really well with my like dark hair but I really love like nudes and I'm loving this pattern and I know Skein Cocaine said that she would be okay never knitting a bobble ever again, but I actually don't mind the bobbles. I actually enjoyed working the bobble rows. So A++, another Caitlin Hunter pattern that I'm like obsessed with. I love it. I really do. I can't wait to finish this and wear it when it's epically cold out. So I think it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. And to top it off, I will be putting on this fabulous pom-pom that I got at Chelsea Yarns. This was all the rage last year. Everybody had these like really cute fuzzy pom-poms on all their hats. And this year I decided that it's time for me to treat myself with a beautiful, luxurious fox pom-pom. And I think and I got this orange one because I really wanted to just get like orange in there. It would be Gigi made it approved, but I think these two make an excellent color combo. What do you guys think? Let me know below in the comments. And yeah, that's living in the same project bag that my Zweg was living in. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. this I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this knit. And it's and it's a fast knit too, obviously, because it's a hat. Being from someone that's been knitting on garments for the past couple months, it's it's nice to have this kind of instant gratification knit. So and definitely hat season's coming up, so get on it. Oh, so the next topic, let's check my notebook out that is one of my souvenirs from Japan as you could probably tell by the stickers I put all over it yeah so the next topic is finished objects I am going to just zoom out a little bit and show you guys I haven't taken pictures of my zoo well I took pictures when I went to Japan if you follow me on Instagram you've probably seen it but I'm just gonna back this up a little bit to show you guys this is my zweg and it's in my orgasm colorway as well as my grains of paradise colorway and I'll just lower that a little bit so you guys see I did end up doing the cable pattern and guys, 
this yarn, this, first of all, I'm using my merino nylon indulge base. I am either knitting with merino nylon cashmere or I am knitting with like the roughest wool that this earth can give to us because I like both extremes. But I'm loving this wag. It is so warm. I actually wore this on a day in Japan that wasn't as cold as I thought it was going to be or that was forecasted. So you could just imagine it was hot because this is a very warm uh, pattern. Very well, very warm base. So this is just an extremely warm sweater. I, I can't. I'm gonna be wearing this all the time. I did actually end up knitting the body really, really long, as longer than I think I was supposed to. But I'm okay with that because I like to tuck my sweat. I like to tuck things in. I'm a tucker. I tuck my shirts in. I like that look because I do always uh, wear high waisted pants. So it's perfect. All right, now moving along to my Japan trip. Guys, Japan was amazing. It was such a fantastic experience just being in a completely different country than I couldn't. It was a really great experience, and if anybody ever has the opportunity to go, I would highly suggest it. Um, I think a lot of people are scared to go to a country in which they won't speak the language or even have any sort of remote understanding of the language, and that's something that you really shouldn't worry about in Japan because everything you could get by in Japan without speaking a lick of Japanese. I mean, their infrastructure is so advanced. Their train systems are all in English. It's very easy to get around. I highly recommend it. But honestly, the real uh, show stopper in Japan were the toilets. If you guys know what I'm talking about, the toilets in Japan are so amazing. They're revolutionizing, like revolutionary, excuse me. They are just so amazing. The toilet seats are always warm, which if you guys ever sit on a cold toilet seat, you guys know what I'm talking about. In the morning, on a cold day, last thing you wanna do is sit on a cold toilet seat. But it is amazing. It comes with built-in bidets. It's just, you're always shower fresh when you use a toilet in Japan. So I love the toilet. I, could, I can't stop raving enough about the toilets in Japan. I, I, yeah, I just, I loved them. Um, also, the souvenirs and the food was just so fantastic. We went to go to Nara Park, which is a famous park uh, in Nara, to, uh, in, Nara in, in, in Japan. And there are these sacred deer that just, they walk. So in Nara, Japan, there are these sacred deer that just walk around and you could take you could touch them and you can give them crackers and they were a riot. They were such a riot. I thought it was really fascinating because I feel like here in New Jersey kind of deer are considered pests just because they carry Lyme disease and all that, you know, nasty shit. So, oops, sorry, I forgot I can't curse, but I'll leave that out. Um, yeah, so deer are kind of like a faux pas here in New Jersey, but in Japan, in NAR specifically, it is like they're welcome. You touch them, they're beautiful. And it was a really great experience to go there, to go to Nara, as well as being in like a very religious setting, which is really fascinating to see the temples and just to be around uh, Buddhists and just to see like the ancient buildings that have just been standing there for so long. It was very inspiring. So, I got to go to a yarn shop in Japan. And that kind of brings me to a giveaway that I will be doing with this yarn that I had bought at this yarn shop. I visited this yarn shop in Kyoto. It is called Avril Papine. And I'm actually gonna insert a little clip right here so you guys can see my experience in the yarn shop. So, I'll see you guys in a minute. Hello, and I'm here in Kyoto, and I'm going to be visiting Avril Yarn Shop. Come on! Hello. Hello. 
So how amazing was that? One of you lucky viewers is going to be getting this prize that I got to purchase at Avril Pepin. So I want to do a giveaway for you guys and I thought that this would be a perfect way. It's a little package and it comes with this, it comes with Japanese yarn from this yarn shop. And if you guys saw from the video, in Japan they don't really sell skeins the way they do here conventionally in the United States and probably other parts of, of the world. When I went to Iceland they also sold like bundled cakes. In Japan what they do is you pick out whatever yarn you want and then you pay per 10 grams. So I ended up getting a 100 gram, two, I ended up getting a total of 100 grams so that somebody can make a pair of socks or a small garment like a hat or mittens or something or include in a shawl if that's what they really wanted to and this is lamb lamb's wool and this is in like a kind of like a deep forest green and it's really beautiful it has kind of like this This like yellow sheen to it and it's just like a deep foresty green which is really beautiful as well as and I got a, I think I got let's see 70 grams of that colorway and I also got this kind of gray color it's just like a heathered gray and this is really beautiful I absolutely love these and I will be giving that away to one of you lucky viewers um, so I will put more information about this giveaway on Instagram so definitely follow me on Instagram if you guys want to learn more about how you can win this awesome prize that I got for you guys in Japan and yeah I'm really excited about that I'll put my handle right here so you guys can go and immediately see if you have Instagram. And if you guys don't have Instagram, please let me know in the comments. I do want to include as much people as possible in this giveaway. So definitely let me know. All right, so let's talk about other things that I was able to acquire in Japan. I was able, so I'm a big bullet journal, a big bullet journal gal. And so I went crazy in Japan because they are known for their stationery. And so I'm just gonna show you like a small percentage of the stuff I got. I got so much Japanese like stationery. So first of all, I got this bullet journal that I was able to decorate. And it has like a bunch of stickers, sushi stickers, which is awesome. And I'm gonna be using this to kind of do show notes and to kind of lay out my week and I'm really excited I love it if you guys follow me on Instagram you guys probably saw me showcase this rose cleanser which when you pull both of these sides down you get a little bit of a rose motif and I'll do that for you guys here Uh, 
How cool is that? And it smells like roses too, which is so awesome. So that was amazing. And I also got a bunch, a big stationery haul. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you guys some stickers that I got. I got these gorgeous mushroom motif stickers, which I'll probably design one of my next, one of my next bullet journal ideas. And they're just so sweet. There's nothing like a nice mushroom. I also got Christmas stickers because obviously December's coming up. So I wanted to include I wanted to include some holiday stickers in my haul. There you go. They're so pretty. I love them. And I also got like pens and washi tape. I'll show you guys the washi tape I got. And pen, I got so many pens. Also got, I have two cats, so I had to get some of these really cool sock stickers, uh, uh, cat stickers. And that's like a little cat as a sushi. And they are just so adorable. And they have like this gold, this gold, some gold around it, and I just thought these were so sweet. I mean, I have two kitties, so obviously I love them. And stickers just make bullet journaling so fun. I also got a mushroom washi tape, which is really cool. And I'm obsessed. It's, I'm excited to use this for when I do my mushroom themed bullet journal. And I got these really, really convenient three millimeter washi tape, which is easy to kind of divide the months. And that was also, it's a lot of fun. On top of my stationary, crazy stationary haul, that's not even a 10% of my haul. I also got really, I went to a pottery place where everything is handmade by hand and each um, item is handmade from a different region in Japan. So I think this was from Nagasaki. And this was handmade pottery and hand painted. It was apps. I, I just had to have it. This is actually a set that I will be bringing. It's a mug and a bowl that I will be bringing to work with me because I make my own lunch. So I thought it'd be nice to have like a nice little set for work. And I just loved that store. They had so many creative pieces from all over Japan. So like you really see the details of all these different artists and how they put it into their pottery. And I just, I loved it so much. It was such a great trip. Again, like, if you guys can make it out there, I highly recommend it, but. Enough about what I've been doing. Thank you guys so much for coming and visiting Hub City Fibers podcast. I really am enjoying the podcasting and I know I'm still a little new at this, so please be patient or if you have any suggestions, definitely put them down below. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much. And if you're new, definitely hit the subscribe button. I'm here to stay and yeah. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching.